Hey guys, welcome back. This is part two of my pigeon hunting and high wind video. And in this video, I'm gonna show you guys the tools that I use to hold over and dope the wind and make shots like this. So briefly, here is the, an outline of the basic required information that you need to make these kind of shots. Okay, now we'll tackle these one at a time. And first up is range estimation. So here's a look at the hunting site uh, a couple days later, much nicer weather. And at the top of this green bin here was the 88 yard shots. Two birds were taken at this location. And the bird that was taken down here was in uh, 30 frames per second real time in HD, if you, if you recall that one. And this was the long shot on the solo bird at 98 yards, 90 meters. I didn't know those ranges, of course, when I took the shots. I used my intuition, my experience, and the mill dot scope to guess the ranges. Um, I put them in the video after I lasered them. So in part one, I mentioned that I had three misses, three missed shots caught on film. And then I was going to show you uh, two of them, which I did in part one and save one for part two. And uh, this is that miss. Um, you might know from my other videos that I've had ground squirrels and other birds matrix me, dodge the bullet at the very last second. And here comes another one. Zap, right past that guy. And uh, let me show you something here quick. Um, so here is a still of where he was one second later. This is where he was, and this is where the pellet was. Now I can't say for sure whether or not this would have been a headshot. I do know it would have been darn close. If I'm being honest, I think it probably would have passed just in front of his face, missing him by millimeters. Anyway, I'm going to use this miss as my demonstration for range estimation. I'll pause it right here and you can take a look at the uh, that the length of the bird is stretching between two mill dots. Now before I get started let's talk about the mill dot scope. Now I'm not going to get into the specifics of mill dot scopes, the history, um, the particulars of the scope. Just know this, at 100 yards at a, at a magnification of 10x, there is 3.6 inches in between each dot. At 100 meters, at the same magnification, there are 10 centimeters in between each dot. So, given that we know this, you now need to know the approximate size of your target in order to do proper range estimation. So your average pigeon is about 13 inches long. So at 100 yards, that pigeon would span almost four mil dots at 10x power. As you can see on my video, it's only spanning almost two mil dots, a little shy of two. Now the reason for this is my scope is a true mil dot scope at 20 power, not 10. So when I reduce my magnification to 10 power, each dot becomes twice as big as it was. In other words, instead of three point six inches in between each dot at 100 yards, there are now 7.2 inches in between each dot. So given that, it would be 14.4 inches in between two dots at 100 yards. If the pigeon at 13 inches is almost the two dots there, we know that this is less than 100 yards, but not by much. I guessed this distance to be around 90 yards when I took my shot. It turns out the actual distance was 88 yards. I was very close. Pellet speed. This will take all of 8 seconds. You need to have a chronograph to do this. There is no other uh, economical way to get it done. The speed for my gun was 900 feet per second or 274 meters per second. Wind speed. There are 
actually devices that can measure wind speed. They measure wind direction as well. They don't usually cost too much, around $100 more or less. And a lot of guys consider them a very necessary piece uh, of their equipment, especially the field target guys. I don't actually own one of these. I've never even used one. I'll probably have one in my arsenal someday, but for now, it's my experience as a windsurfer and a sailor that gives me my intuition when it comes to the wind. If you're like me and you don't own one of these things, NOAA has this chart here, and I find it pretty convenient. This chart gives you visual cues as to what you can expect from your surroundings for certain winds at certain speeds. It's a handy chart and easy to use. I've added meters per second below the miles per hour there for my international friends. The direction or the angle of the wind is with respect to the line that the bullet is fired. In other words, if it's right behind you, it's zero degrees. If it's right in front of you, the wind that is, it's 180 degrees. And somewhere in between is some number between zero and 180. But it's always with respect to the line that's fired. So if you look at this picture, this was the actual line um, that I shot with the top of the picture being north, the bottom of the picture being south. This is an overhead view, of course. And you can see that um, I wasn't shooting. I was shooting kind of east-northeast, and the wind was coming from the west-southwest, south-southwest, somewhere in there. And it fluctuated between 30 and 60 degrees. And you have to take this into consideration because when the wind was at 60 degrees, I had to dope for the wind more than I had to when the wind was at 30 degrees. Incline angle. This one requires actually more talking than I plan to do in this video. I'm going to cover this in depth in my next video. Um, the angle, how it relates to the distance as well as the distance affected by gravity. Um, all of this might seem foreign to you right now, but I assure you I will cover it in depth. And Chairgun actually takes all this into consideration and I will show you the relationship of how all this interacts. And, um, so just for now, try to guess what the angle is based on straight overhead is 90 degrees and you can get, kind of judge what a 45 degree angle is. I guessed my angle to be 20 degrees. Um, and I think it was pretty close, actually. So. I'll stop rambling now and just know that in the next video we're going to cover this in depth with a lot of pictures. And the final um, thing on our list is ballistic coefficient. Um, the handy thing is that Chair Gun has a drop down menu with almost every pellet on the market. Um, of course there is other ways to do this. There are real world calculations you can make by using two chronographs, one at the muzzle and one downrange. I don't have two chronographs and I doubt you do either, so just know that you can get the ballistic coefficient for entry into chair gun off of the program itself. And that covers all of the elements, all of the information that we will need um, to make these shots. I want to make a point now that of course when I go out in the field hunting, I'm not thinking of all this. This is comes from practice. But the program itself, Chairgun that is, can help you learn how to make use of this information so that when you go out in the field, you know what to expect. After that, you know, it's like anything. Practice, practice, practice. And you start making decisions without, you know, doing calculations in your head and thinking things too hard. It becomes second nature. That's the goal of it. The program gives you the first step to get to that part, that stage in your hunting. So uh, don't expect to be taking laptops and, and calculators out in the field with you. Um, that's simply impractical. Use the program for what it is. It's a training tool and a darn good one. We'll see you at part three, guys, where we cover this all in depth, plug it all into the equations, into the program, and see where it gets us. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you at part three.